Amen. Well, a couple traveled to visit their son and his family over Christmas. And Grandpa sees uh, a really nice, beautiful nativity set in their house. And he asks his little granddaughter if she knows what it is. Yes, she replied. It's breakable. Jesus was breakable. Isn't that astounding? That the God of the universe wrapped himself in the weakness and frailty of a newborn human baby. And I am missing my remote. Oh, well. Yes, that's it. Thank you of a newborn human baby. Over the last few weeks, we've been looking at the four Gospels and their depiction of the coming of Christ in our Advent series, Do You See What I See? As we've said each week, the Gospel, the, the four Gospels are the same event. We've used this image to show it's kind of like the same event being viewed from four different corners, from four different perspectives. The four Gospels are the, the birth, life, death, and resurrection of Jesus the Messiah through the eyes of four different people from four different perspectives. Tonight we get to John's Gospel. John sees Jesus as the Son of God. Not that the others don't, but this is John's main emphasis all the way through his gospel. And that's why, uh, because of this, the first 18 verses of John's gospel tell the story of Jesus' birth event from the vantage point of heaven. We often look at how Mary felt that evening, how, how Joseph felt leading up to the birth of Christ, how, how the shepherds felt. I've even heard messages on how the animals felt, right? But what was the atmosphere of heaven like that night? How did the Father see what was happening? What made the angels step back in awe and wonder? John begins his gospel with the words, in the beginning. Sound familiar? Those are the exact same three words at the beginning of the Bible in Genesis. In fact, the word Genesis means beginning. John wants us, as we read his gospel, to think of creation. When the Almighty God created the universe, he spoke matter and time into existence. Science itself tells us that at the beginning of the universe, one moment there was nothing, and then the next moment there was everything. Genesis says this, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty, darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. And in these first three verses of the Bible, we see the Trinity doing the work of creation. God the Father creating through the agency of spoken word and His Spirit hovering over all of it. And that agency of thought or word in the act of creation, the ancient Greek philosophers such as Plato had a word for that and it was word, it was logos. Word, the Word of God. 
And John pulls on this, this language for us to see that the wisdom and the creative power of God is the second person of the Trinity. Snap back to John's Gospel and we read, in the beginning was the Word, was the Logos. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through Him all things were made. Without Him nothing was made that has been made. So before there was matter or time, there was just God. Father, Word, and Spirit. And then God, through the glory of the Word, by the power of the Holy Spirit, made everything. He made it, and it was very good until it was not. Because humans participated in the devil's rebellion against God and poisoned themselves and God's good creation. But before matter was even created, God knew the mess that we would make. And the Logos, the Word, planned to come and rescue us. John says later in, uh, in the same passage, in verse 14, the Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father full of grace and truth. The angels knew the Logos as the one who shared the glory with the Father. There was no one and nothing like him in all of existence. He is the matchless Logos, the matchless Word. But how could this possibly be God's plan? How could the power of creation itself become a created one? How could He put on weakness and come in such humility? The angels must have wondered, will the humans even recognize who this glorious one is. But when John says the Logos became flesh, he doesn't mean Jesus appeared like a human or that Jesus was born as a little baby with superpowers, but that glory was wrapped in the ordinary flesh of a peasant baby. He was breakable. How could this be? In 1 Peter, it says regarding God's salvation plan in Christ that even the angels long to look into these things. Even though the angels announced it the night he was born and, and angel armies could came and, and stood guard over the baby from the evil schemes of the enemy, even though they were present, they didn't understand it. How could it be? Some of the important words in John's Gospel as he writes of the coming of Christ, one of them is the word eternal. Because Jesus stepped out of eternity into time to make a way for us to join Him in eternity. Right? And then there's the word love. One of the, one of the often used words of John in the Gospel is the word love. Because in John's mind, love was everything that motivated this crazy plan where God the Logos became a frail human to live among us for a time. God loves you. 
and he pursued your heart from eternity to the manger to tonight. And then there's the word believe. It's a really important word in John's gospel, believe. John writes in verses 9 to 12, the true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Believing in God's, believing in God's love that pursued you from eternity and believing in his Son, the Word of God who was born in frailty and lived among us, who died in our place and rose again, doesn't just gain us forgiveness and heaven, but it gives us the right. The word that John uses there is, is even translated as authority. Gives us the authority, the right to become children of God. Jesus became like us so that we could become like him. The word became flesh so that we could become children, sons and daughters of God. From heaven's perspective, God entered his creation that night to win sons and daughters. The question that we need to ask tonight is, do you, will you believe? Will you trust the love of God? Will you let Jesus, the Word, be your hope? That is why He came. Let's pray. God, we thank you for your amazing love. Love that would leave heaven, leave the glory that you lived in and, and enjoyed with the Father and, and enter into this world in simplicity and poverty. That you would live among us and that Jesus, you, the Word of God, would die in our place for our sin. Breaking the power of sin in our lives and rising again to break the power of death so that we might have life. And we declare tonight we believe in you. We trust in you. And we are thankful for your amazing love. Come and fill our lives. Come and fill our Christmas. Come and fill our, uh, our homes and our families with your presence and your power, with your hope and your peace. In Jesus' powerful name we pray. Amen. This time, I'm going to ask uh, our ushers, they're going to, I'm going to ask you to stand. The ushers are going to come and they're going to take some fire from, uh, from the front here. They're going to walk down the aisles and light the candles of those who are on the edges. And if you could pass the fire down the row until we all have our candles lit, we're going to sing together as we conclude tonight. Silent night.
you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. One more time. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Have a Merry Christmas, folks. God bless you. Thank you for joining us tonight. And uh, yeah, we hope you have a great evening, great day tomorrow. God bless.